game. I already said I'm quit the game. Hey guys, when they 9 here as this loads up. First off, sorry if you hear any like extra background noise. Um, saying in this room is like it's killing me. It's like I'm sweating because of the heat, and it's not even hot. We have the AC on, so open up the window a little bit. There might be some background noise, and I actually I'll be right back when it opens up, and you could get a bottle of water. <laughs> I'm on my second bottle, going on third. I almost like the second. Actually, hold on, what's in extras? Yeah, just stuff, I'll probably unlock all of this stuff afterwards. Probably locked for now. Okay. I've been playing for an hour now, and I need to start my timer before I forget again. <clears throat> also, I'll be doing a lot less stuff on my phone now. Let me just... Start up my trusty timer. Season and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some of the students favor eating in the classroom or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates at box lunches. After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. So he chat, you want to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right? Okay. Ellipses. Right, teacher. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again, and Misha straightens her posture as if she's about to deliver a speech. Ichan, do you have anything you're really interested in? I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow teams or players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just play a lot. Hmm, there's a book club, right, teacher? Right, but it seems like they have all the members they can possibly have right now. Sorry, Heaton, it's a really popular club. Ellipses. Uh, okay, but more to the point, Heaton. Does this mean you don't have anything already in mind? Not really. Ellipses. Good, great. That's great, Heaton. Really great. Why is it so great? No reason. Well, he chan other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student council. I see. I didn't know the school had a student council. That was very, um, that was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me. Yeah, pretty very dramatic. Very dramatic, melodramatic. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this, because he's now looks just a little embarrassed about it. And Misha is laughing. Season that quickly retakes control of the situation in the manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has the voice to uh, has to voice whatever she says. Ellipses. Yays. Ha ha ha. I cannot believe I read that out again. Hmm. Right, right. He chan. Maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Well, for one, we could hang out every day, he chan See, chan and I are both in the student council. Actually, see, chan is the president. I feel like I skipped some text there. I'll pause it and post. <clears throat> I'm starting to get suspicious that Susan and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this with. Yeah, probably not. As if reading my mind, Susan had quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. Ellipses. Haha, <laughs> of course, I can. I need to stop doing that. I still have to stop doing that. Of course, we're not trying to get you to join. Just because we would obviously benefit from having you join the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to. No commas in that. Seriously. So, I admitting that. Ellipses. Ah, uh, no. We admit nothing. I mean, of course, he chan. Uh, uh, I mean, he chan, of course, it would be nice if you joined. I mean, appreciate it. But even with our all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one's school. I tried joining once. Became treasurer. We did nothing. For like two years. Yep, it's true. He chan Besides, don't you want to spend time with us after school, He chan I can't tell if she's being genuine or, is th or if this is just really good acting. Both of them seem to be trying hard to look their cutest, I need two words, although they are already pretty cute to begin with. 
Well, ellipses. So it's settled then. Welcome to the Soon <laughs> Council Heat Chan. What? No, no. Ah, uh, CC Chan. Of course it wouldn't go so easily. Ellipses. Yep, that's right. I thought it would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh well, CC Chan knows me candle. candy now. You are banging on it? Hey, my life is not a game here. Seasoner seems very intrigued by this when Misu signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. Th that's interesting, he chan That's interesting, he chan Let's play a game. It's not what I said. It's not. How about rich man, poor man, he chan If you lose, you have to enter student council. I'll be googling that later. No, absolutely not. Oh, uh, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive, therefore the same goal. We just get me to join the student council, right? Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that is my goal. But this means that both of you can team up and I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So I will have to decline. Ellipses. Hey, Chan, I'm very offended. Are you saying that you don't trust us and we could pull out of something so di dis in Jen? U.S. Disingenuous? What does that even mean? That makes me sad. Sorry. It's hard to tell where, where season S influence ends and meets sure start to begin. Yeah, who's talking? I can't tell. Season S. Ellipses. In order to atone for her younger young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. No. How about a game of uh, per, paper football instead of rich man poor man? Paper football? Yeah, it's a game they play in America. You make a paper triangle and then try to shoot past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, he chan. It, and it's also played by elementary and middle school children, he chan. This means a game that this means it's a game that really separates the boys from the men. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not gonna play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means you're probably surprisingly good at it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you know, Hee-chan? She's in the round at me, so telling me she was probably not supposed to admit that so readily. Probably not. What is this? I wouldn't say that I'm happy with her att with their attempts to get me into Street and Council. I'm a little curious about what the Street and Council does here. What does student council ever do anyway? I've never been on one before. Or ever or even known anybody who was a member. So it interests me. It's also kind of like Susan and Misha. I also kinda of like Susan and Misha, so it wouldn't be so bad. Okay, he chan how about Whisk? The game of world domination. I wanna play that one day. I don't know what that is. Come on. It's really fun, he chan You fight for control of the world. There's armies and everything. I wanna play it. Sounds like season there would be good at it. If you want to play, we can we can after school. Uh really see Chan? We can play it just for fun, Heat Chan. See Chan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Well, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room then, Heat Chan. Wait, right there. That guy this game seems kinda of suspicious. Because that's where we keep the game. Okay. I grimace to tell them how much I would not like this, but it's more for so than anything. So in the end, I agree, but only after getting season to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. I don't trust this. Then it ends and we go back to class. Cause I'm kind of suspicious, you know? I saw you there for like half a second. Long-haired girl comes back and sits down in the seat without a word. During afternoon classes. Forgot to say that part. Again. No one seems to know us, or if they do, then no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. At, after school, Susan and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. Seems kind of extreme, doesn't it? I feel a little offended, but I'd, consider, but I'd been considering it. Nevertheless, I'm a, a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for in the past that they're on their guard. So what's with the escort? 
this doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to a cell. <coughs> What's wrong, Hee-chan? Um, you're, you're kind of guarding me and expecting me to bolt. That's right, we're just going to play a game of risk, remember? Then why are you covering each plank? I don't know, Misha. This all seems a little sinister to me. I'm starting to think that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join student council. That, well, that's highly unlikely, but still, for some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Yeah, eh, I wouldn't put it past them. Getting to the student council room is as simple as selling two coins from when we started. What? That's it? This makes you guys being so on top of me so seem a little silly. Yeah, that's not true, Chan. See, Chad says whenever that when their life is threatened, people have the capability to, sh to pull off hu superhuman bursts of speed. Life is threatened. Oops, muted again. Life is threatened. Yeah. Okay. Expression unchanging. Misha signs something immediately to Shijune, sh who makes a baffling face and puts her hand behind her back, looking pleased with herself. Yeah, no, I'm not trying it. I'm not even gonna try. Me just feigns deafness and hum surely. Yeah, I, I can't hum. Stop that. I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Seasoner. Seasoner opens the door to the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room, although it's quite large. Maybe even, maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume a season is. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras perhaps? Aside from the tables and chairs, the room doesn't seem to have much else to offer. There's a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old school records and documents. Nothing much else in fact. <clears throat> this is a pretty bleak room. They could at least put a party plan in here or something. But the most noticeable thing that that this room doesn't have is other people. Are they the only ones in here? Are we early? <sighs> Ellipses. No. So are you guys the only one here? What do you mean no? Does it mean no one else is coming today? Come on, put the pieces together. Yeah, that's right. I... Yeah, I, you guys are the only ones here. I can feel it. Before I manage to ask what's the case, Seasoner really claps her hands together very energetically. Hee-chan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. Why else would he be here? Okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain to you how we set everything up. Are you going to explain the rules during this? Like, it's a lot. When Misha is talking, Seasoner takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on on the table. <laughs> Actually, this looks kind of interesting. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, season that cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Okay, okay. Are we gonna be like playing this or is this gonna like, you know, it happened? Season is aggressiveness is rubbing off on me. I start feeling more competitive than I intend to be when I agree to this. Well hey, Risk is a world domination game, you'd probably get competitive. After into the game and I try to ponder how to defeat defend against Season as assault from two fronts, she breaks my con concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. He turn, he turn. He turn wants you to know that you're taking too long with yeah, you're taking too long to make a move. Seachan also says that she will let you keep us ready if you agree to join the student council. I thought it was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means she knows I care about the outcome of this game. Oh, it's Australia. They're probably going to win in the end, so keep them. Come on. Anyway, no. Join the student council already. Come on. Seachan admires your fighting spirit and will, would be a benevolent, benevolent 
excuse me, dictator who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. <laughs> You're so competitive, she's in there. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous? Definition. Magnanimous? Yeah. She doesn't seem to know what that word means or how it's said. He pulls back a piece of paper and writes it for Shizuna, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers to her temples as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly, Shizuna sends fl burst into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heat signing. <clears throat> ah, wait. Slow down, Shichen. Um, Shichen, Shichen says you're going to lose. Probably am. Uh, okay. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Okay. Ah, okay. Those eyes of hers sign with childlike mischief. Yeah, what's with that face though? Shizuna says you have no choice if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. Um, I'm assuming... Okay, so I'm assuming I'm playing defensively then? Granted. Think about this. Being attacked from two fronts. Playing defensively, I'm just going to corner myself in. But playing aggressively, I'm going to spare out my troops. I'm, I am dead. Either way. And actually, yeah, saving, um, save button, boom. X out that, create a new save state. Oh, great. <clears throat> okay. Granted, though, I am an aggro player when I play video games, so aggro. She is either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose though, so I might as well try something different. Yeah, you know, YOLO. You're either gonna <coughs> defend and lose, or you're gonna fight and gain territories or lose. Maybe if I spread my forces and try to control more territories, I can recoup the advantage. That's what I do whenever I play games like this. Season that seems to be focusing on conquering whole nations. Maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. Yeah, then surround them with small countries. That's how you rule the world. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyways. Okay. Seasoner adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively bump her fist in the air in celebration. Ellipses. I win, I win, yay! There's no need to translate that, it was pretty clear. Yeah. Don't look so sad, he said. You're really giving it your best. That's what I thought. Sometimes your best isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for somebody who learned how to play today. Who just learned how to play today. Excuse me. My ear is killing me. Ellipses. Si Chen, you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. Si Chen is impressed. Is impressed. I was about to say, who would attack Iceland? But I'm thinking of Greenland. Um, yeah, that's um. Don't worry about it. It has to do with um. Did I ever play planking? I don't think I played it on my channel. I should. The mark of great people is that they are daring and that they can follow through. You already have to right there. Isn't that great, Si Chen? That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There's no point to potential if you don't take the first step. And there's no point to that if you don't keep going. I want to see more. Is this going to... This is somehow going to go around to me joining student council. I can feel it. You're right, Chi-chan, but that's so demanding. Susan at least for it, suddenly looking a lot less playful and more like the serious person I expected her to be from the start. Okay, what's going on? Yi Chen, would you like to join the student council? She really doesn't waste any time, does she? But it's only my second day of school. I'm hesitant about coming to something so early. Just join it. 
I haven't even taken a look at any of the clubs yet. Just join at this point. But spending time with Siege, Gina, and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate to just join in. I still need more time to think about it before I decide for sure. Maybe. I'll get back to, uh, back to you on it. It's time now, at least. Okay, Hee-chan. I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. Really? Hee-chan, if you're gonna say that, if you're going to say that, you're, de you're saying that it is definitely the truth, and there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know. I guess I should have my revenge for losing at the very least. Season and bit smiles at that in a mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wood of my loss. Is that so, I thought that was suspicious before and then playful before now it's mischievous? You're going to play for mischievous at the same time. And mischievous is basically the same thing. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I spent far longer playing with than I expected. How long has it been? I expect it to take a couple hours. Like probably not monopoly length. Maybe. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Ugh. Season scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, T Chan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. We can't miss it. Do you want to show you where it is? No thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Um, you don't know where anything is. That's not a good idea considering you think your way might be closed. Bye bye. Bye. See you later. Once I get stairs up and, I'm, and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Yeah, it kind of does look like it. The only thing I know is the different is the painting chains. And I don't think I saw this fire alarm in the other one. Wide, of course. And plain. Like only hallways can be. Yes, hallways are always plain. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not really as easily determined as one would think. Really? I'd imagine you just look for the double doors. Considering everything else here seems to be single doors. The classrooms are marked with signs saying which class they belong to, but then there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Ooh. But wouldn't it be a double door? I don't know. Is the library one of them? Or is it just somewhere down the hallway? <clears throat> I bet on the ladder and choose my direction at random. <laughs> You're gonna get lost. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either though, just barely a jar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. Okay. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one's not quite that, it's good enough. Okay. At the very least, it means that someone is inside and I can ask for directions, no matter how embarrassing it is. That is. I gently press on the center of the door with my fingertips. I have a muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind. So much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong of uh, fear doing something wrong by entering. Sound effects. Oh, but I forgot to read that. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, the sound effects just thinking, I'm pretty sure I said the door creaked as he opened it. Leaning over and poking my head even further inside to get inside of the room as fast as possible to make hello, on my lips quick, is quickly snatched away. Can I like, it will keys, you're not doing anything for me. Back up. I'll pause it. Um. <clears throat> okay. This is, not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure standing center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently, having taken the time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes but doesn't look at me. Why, oh, hello there. May I help you? 
Staring directly in front of herself, the movement of her li lips seemed to break the silence rather than the words. Huh? Oh, okay. Took me a second. However, it's uh, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's being she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid la laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I met, I met she's strikingly distinct. Again, yeah, she does actually look kind of not Japanese. But then again, normally they don't look Japanese. Whatever. Uh, hi. Sorry for intruding. I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Okay, just can take a seat. Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight like, loudness in her eyes means she must be at least partially blind like Kenji. Come think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamamaku? Uh, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling from my speech, feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers. Sent to eat it by her restrained bow of green. Accentuated. Definition. One way which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of the action. I'm Lily Satow. Pleased to meet you. I certainly probably leave more time for that definition to be up. Hisao. Hisao Nakai. I'll probably just pause the verse for now. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of a teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along the shelf. A brush here, a brush there. Her left hand is often, slight, is often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As a late sideways, lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to be using her long, dainty finger to measure the right amount of wire in the cup. It's, it's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to, to see how everyone seems to adapt. Now, it actually gets me thinking, how do people who are blind, or like, at least, you know, extremely blind, you know, compared to partially blind, how do they do their hair and stuff? I've always wondered that. An interesting. I can probably Google it later. Susan and Misha have no problems working together to commun to communicate to me. And Lily herself seems to have work around for problems I never thought of. Yeah, like serving tea. I never thought that'd be a problem. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be doing to be following the correct process <clears throat> of the offerer preparing the drink. So. This soft voice brings me out of my slight observance. Which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. What classroom is this? The school library. She's there and me. I mean, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods. A small metallic tapping comes from the teacup indicating it's being stirred. <coughs> 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 uh, okay, yeah, why? Please. <clears throat> I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means that you're in class 3-3, no? That's right, in the science room with Mutao. She gives a small giggle before saying on a teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, tea, cup, and saucer in hand. Okay, so I'm gonna end this video off here. It's about a minute and a half early, but I really need to go to the restroom. So I'm ending off this episode here. Let's go ahead and save it. 
I've went into three choices so far. Only two I managed to save, though. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed this episode. My name is Wendy Nine, and I will be continuing this shortly.